and I think everyone should at least once in their life try taking a sabbatical from your nine to five job for channel as you can see I am extremely ashy and that's because I just got out of the shower and I wanted to do my skincare on the camera so we're gonna start off this video by talking about hormonal acne you know this is a chit chat kind of get, re get ready with me video so let's start with hormonal acne basically started when I turned 25 and I turned 25 in July that's about like two two and a half three months ago I was on the internet looking up so many different things, wasting my money, wasting my time, and I just got frustrated and I just took myself to a dermatologist. The acne was taking a toll on me, taking a toll on my self-confidence. I was legit crying of how it made me feel and how it hurt also, like it hurt. So I went to a dermatologist, she recommended some... Um, so products that she highly recommended for me so I went and go grabbed it so I'm going to be showing that on camera and also prescribed me some medication we're going to talk about the medication later on but right now my face is extremely ashy and I need, just need to do something to it so usually when I, I usually I scrub I scrub my face with the CeraVe um, foaming facial cleanser while there's still water in my face I go in with my um, skincare product but because of the fact that I'm filming the water in my face are uh, all gone so I'm gonna take my heritage store rose water and just spritz it all over my face because my face needs some moisture right now next we're gonna go in with the moisturizing lotion she definitely recommended she wanted me to use the CeraVe. She wanted me to use the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing um, Lotion, and I just worked that all in my face. And I've seen a tremendous, I've seen a tremendous improvement in my skin, and it's on. It's been honestly less than a week. And I've seen such tremendous results from this skin product so far, switching over to this. Next product my doctor recommended is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, a Hydro Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry, fragrance free with hyaluronic acid. This is what it looks like. It's not the water gel, it is the Hydro Boost Gel Cream. For extra dry skin I'm not sure if you guys can see it I'm trying a new lens and it's so far away from me so I apologize if you can't see it and if I'm editing and I see that you can't see it I'm gonna put an image on the screen a clear image of the skin pair product on the screen but I'm gonna work that all over my skin again I've seen some I've seen some amazing results with this in just less than a week in less than a week and these products were expensive. This alone cost about twenty dollars for this little jar. The jar is just how many ounces is this? I don't know. Um, one point seven fluid ounce, and that's how small it is. And it's twenty dollars. Twenty dollars this for my morning and nighttime routine something she also recommended is that I should always always wash my face at nighttime she asked me how many times a day do I wash my face I said I try I was honest I said I tried twice but sometimes I end up being lazy and I only do it once and good morning she, she said well if you're gonna do it once and then once a day make sure it's at night time because overnight while you sleep your face produces so much oil and throughout the day she said make sure you're washing your face at night time so after that that's just the second product this is the third product it's the hydro boost hydrating serum 
I really, really like this stuff. Also, I'll just put a picture on the screen. <laughs> And then she recommended to use sunscreen. I purchased this Black Girl sunscreen. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it, but I'm not really an outdoors person, so I'm never really outside, but I just purchased it just in case, and I always have it on me. But I'm not using it today because I'm just gonna be inside doing my makeup, talking to the camera, and things like that. So I just purchased it just in case, and I've heard really good things about it, and it's black owned too. So, and I heard it doesn't leave a white cast over your face, so I'm not using that today, but I did get that and sh because it was recommended to me. And then this is exactly what I do for my nighttime routine. The only difference is this different gel. Also recommended by my dermatologist. Oh, this is so hard to see. I'll put a picture on the screen. The different gel she recommends once a day a pea size for my trouble area. So one, two, three, four, the pea size, and then I rub it, I work it all into my skin and it's been working. I'll post some before pictures on the screen, but this side of my face was doing so bad. But it's all like it's going down. Again, this is less than a week. And it's going down. It's, I think it's doing really good. Now I, I feel like I can confidently put on makeup without like the bumps. So yeah. I'm going to let that um, the product sit in my skin for a little while. Before we go into like the makeup chit chat. Where we're going to talk about hormonal acne. Quitting my job move into a different state and you know just let's talk it out and I'll be right back hey guys so I'm back I chose to do my eyebrows off camera so this is what my brows currently look like so before we jump into this chit chat I just wanted to say that I will leave all the um, all products I use in the description box down below and yeah let's just focus on the chit chat so where do we want to start? Let's start on the fact that I have combination skin, but more on the oily side. So my T-zone gets really, really oily, produces a lot of oil. And then around like the perimeter of my face here, really, just here, are extremely dry. So I'm more on the oily side of combination skin. So to prime my face, I'm going to be using the Becca poreless priming the Becca Evermatte poreless priming on my t-zone area and then the rest of my face I'm going to be using the milk hydrating milk hydro grip primer that's the only makeup talk I'm going to talk about so yeah let's jump into this chit chat like I mentioned I've been suffering from really bad hormonal um hormonal acne since I turned 20, 25. So after I explained that to my dermatologist, she said, well, that's pretty normal you're at that age. Ew, why is he crumbling on my skin? Is he supposed to do this? It's like, it's like crumbling on my skin. Why? We don't want that. Let's go with the Hydro Grip. So she said that was that was pretty normal and um, because I just turned 25, it's like common in a lot of young adults when they reach that age, you start battling like hormonal acne and things like that. And this is so new to me. So when I tell you I was crying, like I was crying because I'm just like, what is this on my skin? Like it doesn't look good. My confidence was down the drain. Okay, like I was crying. So I was happy that she could recommend some, um, prescribe some medication for me. And about the medication, I'm not sure if I can share that on YouTube due to, you know, privacy and things like that. I'm not sure if I can share medication. 
but it is definitely a medication you need prescription for. I am going to say that the medication has been messing up my moods and my productivity and I chose to just reduce the dosage of it. Like I'm telling you, it's messing up my mood. Like once I take it, I feel like I can stay in bed all day. I don't want to talk to one. It just messes up with my mood and my product my productivity and my motivation and I, I, I can't I can't have that. I can't have that at all. So today I didn't use it and I feel this burst of energy. I want to do so much stuff. I want to be productive. I want to do this and that. And that's how I like feeling. So I chose to not use it every day or twice a day. I'm not doing that. Let's talk about moving. Um, I'm using a new foundation also. It's the Lancome. Um, ultra wear 24 hour foundation it's new to me i'll leave my shit down below so let's talk about moving i moved to a whole different state city whatever you want to call it new york to georgia and i wish i could say that you know i just quit my job and took a leap of faith and you know you know what people the more this motivation of people usually say you know i just took a a leap of faith and I quit my job and you know I just put it in God's hands I wish I could say that but that's not realistic and I feel like a lot of them are not being realistic they're just selling you false dreams that's not realistic as an adult with responsibilities I cannot just up and quit my job and take a leap of faith and put things in God's hands nope I cannot do that so I'm here to tell you that I did plan for it I planned for it and not just up one morning and be like oh I'm leaving nope I planned for it this foundation is too light on me what do you guys think like this is my new one this is my old one um I guess they kind of they look the same Yes, so I did save, and we're going to be talking numbers too. You know, I'm not ashamed to talk about money. I'm not ashamed of money. I'm not ashamed to say that I like money. Um, I work for money. I need. I work to have more money, you know, because I know what money does to me. I know what it gives me. It gives me, you know, it gives me this freedom, and I think everyone deserves a bit of it, you know? So I did plan. I did save. I, have a, I had a job. I had. I had a 9 to 5 job and I also had multiple side hustles plus my hair business. So I did save over $10,000 to be able to make this move possible. So again, I did not just get up one day and leave. No, that's not realistic and I'm not going to see here and lie to you. I did save a lot. I cut back on a lot of things. I drive a 2010 car that is fully paid that I bought and fully paid for, you know, I bought it cash. So I don't have like car payments or unnecessary payments that I don't need. All I pay for is my car insurance, my rent, utilities and things like that. I did cut back on like shopping and things like that. I don't go out really, I'm an introvert, I'm a loner, so I don't have friends. I don't go like to bars or like spend money on alcohol or like social life I don't do that so you know that helped me save a lot of money so and the big thing that helped me is having side hustles so for example one of my side hustles is YouTube YouTube pays me monthly and that money I can just put away another thing that's helped me is I was able to put in overtime on my job whenever I'm able to and I would say that the pandemic really messed me up once the pandemic happened COVID I wasn't able to put in um, any overtime so that would although I'm grateful that I had my job I couldn't put in uh, I got a lot of my money from overtime I got a lot of my coins from working overtime and I wasn't able to anymore so I had YouTube on the side and then I had my hair business my hair business which you know you have to spend money to make money and that was a leap of faith I took and you know it worked out for me I was able to um, successfully um, 
make profit from it, I guess. But what else did I do? Talking about moving. So I did plan for this. I um I did save a lot of money to make this move possible to be able to furnish my new apartment, to be able to pay bills, and I knew I didn't want to work right away. I knew I did not want to work right away. I knew I wanted to make my new home feel homey before you know working and I don't I honestly I haven't worked now in for someone in a, in over a month and I don't know how I feel right now I don't know if I still want to work for someone right now I feel at peace that I'm not like answering to someone I feel at peace I feel like I'm taking a sabbatical from a nine-to-five corporate job I feel at peace and I'm just moving at my own pace you know I'm still bringing in money you know, like from YouTube or my business, you know, but majority of my money used to come from my nine to five job. But again, I did save over $10,000 to be able to live like this, you know, and again, I'm not spending my money on like things I don't need, like luxury things or like unnecessary out outings and things like that. I'm not doing that. So I plan for this. I plan to not work. I plan to move, not work for someone for a little while. I know I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but this was my goal, this was my plan, and I feel at peace. And I feel like everyone should be should at least once in their life take a sabbatical from their nine to five job. If you can, please do it. You know, it just it helps you like refocus or like explore your different talents or travel. I know people that love traveling. Let me put on this concealer before I talk. Where is my concealer? Okay, so I usually let my uh, my concealer like dry a little before I um, blend it. But as I was saying, I think everyone should at least once in their life try taking a sabbatical from your 9 to 5 job, from your regular life. And, you know, whether it's traveling or picking up a new hobby or um, just doing something you truly in your heart feel like you want to do or just taking a break and not doing anything, you know, or maybe working on projects around your house or, you know, doing like a demolition in your house or reconstruction or redecorating, redesigning your home, you know, just something. I truly recommend it you know I really truly recommend it and again it's been a month for me right now and I feel at peace I've had a couple offers from jobs and you know some have been like eh, I don't want to do it I don't want to do that oh no not really you know I, I really feel at peace and I truly believe that you know if I am supposed to go back to a nine-to-five the right one will really the right one for me will come to me you know, the, you know how if something's for you, it will be for you. I truly feel believe that if I'm supposed to go back to a nine to five, the perfect op opportunity will fall on my lap. You know, but in the meantime, I'm working on my other talents. I'm exploring my other talents. You know, I'm learning more about myself, and I'm um, seeing my therapist. I'm creating content. You, I'm using YouTube as an outlet and I'm making a little money, extra money on the side. I'm, I just, right now, all I can say is I'm happy. I'm happy right now and that's all that matters. I was happy on my 9 to 5, but I don't know how to explain it to you, but at my 9 to 5, I was able to do creative things, but I had my own creative things also that I wanted to do and Do you ever feel like your head is full of so many ideas you need to execute but you don't have the time to execute it and they just keep piling and piling in your brain and if you don't execute something, your brain is going to explode. That's how I felt. My 9 to 5 job was literally from Monday through Friday. I only had the weekends to myself. And the weekend was not enough for me to like execute these ideas I had in my head. They were not enough. So I would be going crazy. Especially when it's a slow day at work. 
and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I could be at home, like, you know, executing this idea I have in my head. I could be at home, but no, that's not how it works. You got to be at your nine to five. You got to be there from nine to five. You can't just leave, you know? So I was like losing my mind. Oh my gosh. And like, whenever I feel like that, my ears would get so hot. My ears get super, super, super hot. And it's like, it feels like I got to put ice on me to calm it down or something. So... I don't know if anyone can relate, let me know, but that's how I feel as a creative, working for someone else and not being able to execute your own ideas, your own personal project. It feels like I'm in a trap, I'm caged up, I'm locked up somewhere, I'm in bondage, my hands are tied together and I just want to break free. That's what it feels like. So um, I also wanted to mention that I do have a partner and I think it's important for me to mention him, but it's also important for me to mention to you that even if I didn't have him, all of these things I was doing would still be possible because I'm, I prepared myself financially. It's a plus having him, yeah, I'm very grateful for that, but I also wanted to let you know that if he wasn't in the picture or tomorrow he decides he wants to leave, I would still be okay because I prepared myself financially. You get it? So, I think it's important to mention that also. I'm gonna go ahead and blend. Speaking of money, I came from a background where like money isn't spoken on frequently. So, certain amount of money I did not think was attainable or achievable by me. And I used when I would see other people like live this luxurious life or have this certain amount of money, I'm just like, if it's possible for them, why isn't that possible for me? You know, so I started doing my research and the first book I bought was by Jen Sincero, which is titled How to, oh, which is titled You Are Badass and Making Money. That was the first book. I actually bought the audio book so I can listen to it over and over and over and over again. The audio book gave me so much confidence in the sense that whatever amount that is in my head, I can achieve it. It's it's a mind thing, okay? That ten, I'm using ten thousand dollars as a base, but I saved more than that. I, I think I saved to be exact maybe thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars. But let's just use ten thousand dollars. I did not think that kind of money was attainable, achievable by me. I don't know why, but I never thought it was possible for me to get to that level. And one of my goal of 2020 was I want to be able to save $10,000. I wrote it down in my, on my board. I wrote it down everywhere that I want to be able to save $10,000. I'm not sure where this money is coming from, but I want to be able to save $10,000. And guess what? I did. Right before my move, by August 1st, I saved $10,000. And I just feel like money, people don't talk about money. You know, in the workplace, people don't talk about how much they make. It's like a, a taboo to talk about money. Why? Why aren't people talking about money? You know, it doesn't make you a bad person to talk about money. Talking about money or wanting money doesn't make you a bad person. Just know why you want more money. Or you want to achieve certain amount but yes I read that book I would highly recommend it I'll leave a link down below where you can find it nothing in this video is sponsored so I'm really speaking from my experience I'm really speaking from something the things that have helped me And my goal at the end of the day is to help women that look like me, around the same age as me, 
that think like me, that feel like me, especially the ones that look like me, you know, the black ones. And if this video can at least motivate just one person, you know, start by that book I just recommended. And I would recommend an audiobook because I found that audiobook to be the best choice because I'm able to listen to it over and over and over. It's like a daily reminder while I'm driving, while I'm getting ready in the morning, while I'm brushing my teeth, while I'm doing my makeup, while I'm working on something. Even at my 9 to 5, I have my headphones in, I'm listening to it. It's a daily reminder that whatever it is that you're thinking of, whether it's money, business, whatever it is that you're thinking of, you can do it, you can attain it, you can achieve it. So it's, it's not like a one and done. You have to constantly listen to that audio. I recommend audiobook because I, I work. Most jobs allow headphones in, but most jobs don't allow you to sit and read a book. You can't do that, but you can listen to music. So that's why I take advantage and listen to my podcast. I'll, again, I'll leave a link down below. I was so happy when I attained and achieved that $10,000 savings. I'm just like, oh my goodness. So I can I can really achieve that. I can do it. Guys, I can do it. And if I can, you can do it too at 25. So now I'm thinking, imagine how much more I can achieve by 30. You know, I was so freaking happy. And I'm again, I'm a 100% independent person. I pay all my own bills from, you know, utilities to groceries to rent to medical, dental, vision everything you know I'm a hundred percent independent so I'm saying if I can do it you can do it too and sure I'm not gonna sit here and act like I don't have doubt I do have doubt you know there are days where I feel so down or when I have this negative thoughts about like um or oh, why are you doing that you can't achieve that I have those negative thoughts but I've learned to tune them out and talk back at it you know, like I'll give you an example. Like I posted a video, I created a content, I posted the content and I put my phone down and then this negative thought striped in. And the negative thought was, oh, why are you doing that? No one is gonna like it. No one's gonna like your content. No one is gonna comment, no one, no one likes you. That negative thought, I battled it with it for so long but I've learned to talk back at it and say things like, well, Somehow I'm able to gather over 10,000 um, subscribers, over 30,000 subscribers. I get comments and likes. Somehow I've been able to, you know, grow this platform and get paid from it. So yes, I can do it. Yes, there are people that actually enjoy my content. So I've learned to talk back at it. Not just ignore it, talk back at it. You got to talk back at it. Um, I'm gonna put this on. You gotta talk back at that self doubt. Talk back, don't just ignore it. You gotta talk back at it and speak on what you've accomplished. Because I do too, I too struggle with those um, negative self doubting thoughts. So I'm not gonna see you and act like I don't. I'm not perfect. Oh, I'm not. I'm far from it. I'm not perfect at all. But as a loner, and I spent a lot of time alone, I've learned myself, and that's what I think. Every I, not I think I know everyone should be able to spend time by themselves and know themselves. Know yourself. Know the things that trigger you. Know what makes you happy. Know what makes you the happiest person. Know what makes you sad. Know what makes you get out of character. Know the things that bring you so much joy. This is going to be a long video. And I know a lot of people aren't going to watch it because it's a long video and I'm not like doing my hair, but it's okay. I'm not doing the video um, to 
for like views or money or anything like that. I'm doing it because I want to and in hopes of helping at least one person, just one, literally just one person. You know? And I, I too watch videos like this, you know, usually when I'm like doing the dishes, cooking, getting ready, doing my makeup, you know, I watch it then because I'm able to like watch it thoroughly and also watch the ads because, you know, I know how it is as a content creator. You know, let them get their coins. So while this is setting, let's talk a, a little more. So we've talked about hormonal acne, we've talked about money, we've talked about moving and saving and preparing for it, preparing for it. This is going to be a long video and I don't want it to be long, but hold on. I feel like I look like a Oompa Loompa, but I look weird. Do I look weird? This makeup looks weird on me. Maybe I don't like the foundation, but... I'm gonna try to bronze it up. But the reason I moved from um, New York to state of New York to Georgia was because I just don't see myself in Buffalo, upstate New York long term like i don't i just i don't see the opportunities there for me like i don't know i just didn't see i don't see it at all like i don't see myself living there i lived there for seven years but i don't see myself living there for like 20 years or like never wanting to move out of there i just don't see it so i came to visit here in georgia um a few a few times and it's just amazing i came here to visit and like there were so many black people and i love that it's not fun being the only black person somewhere. Like, it's not fun at all. So when I came here, I would go to the grocery store, or like the associates, the cashier would all be black. I'm just like, damn, there's so many black people here, you know? And I'm just, I'm just like, what's going on? And I, my boyfriend would have to explain to me that because it's different out here, you know, there's more black people here. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I love this. Like. This is where I want to be. I want to be here. I want to be here. Like, I really liked it. It felt good. It felt, it just felt really freaking good. And moving to Georgia was something I put on my, um, what do you call it? My mood board? And I would just look at it every day and just smile at it every day because this is something I truly wanted. And then boom, it happened. I'm telling you, also, something I wanted to mention is when you truly want something, you gotta <laughs> manifest in it, okay? Take a picture of it, print it out, put it on somewhere you can see every single day. So my work area in my old apartment is something I would see every single day. So I would put it there and just look at it every day and just smile and feel good about it because I know it's going to happen. I don't know why, but I knew it was going to happen. And I just felt this, oh, I just felt this flutters in my heart when I would look at it because I knew it was going to happen for me. And every day I could see it and remind myself that this is truly something I wanted. And then boom, here I am. It happened, you know? <laughs> the power of manifestation. I struggle with living manifestation and like manifestation and working, you know? Working towards it. Your action towards it. You can't just say you want something and like, okay, why do you want it? What are you doing to attain or achieve what you want? So for example, moving, I didn't know when it was going to happen. I didn't know when the perfect apartment or house was going to fall in my lap. But I could only do what I can control. And what I could control was saving. Making sure that when the apartment comes, 
in my lap, I'm able to afford it, you know? So I was able to save that money and once it happened, I'm just like, perfect, I have the money for it. I've been, I've been working for it, I've been saving for it. Boom, it happened. That's how manifestation works. You know, you gotta work behind the scenes. You gotta work behind the scenes and yeah. So I think I've talked enough today and my makeup still isn't done, but I'm gonna finish it and I'm gonna speed it up. Enjoy some music. <laughs> hey guys, so I am back. My makeup is done. I like how it looks. This is a definition of trust the process because I was looking all kinds of crazy on camera when I started. But I like how my basic makeup came out. Um, I'm not sure if I should put my hair down or not. I'm kind of feeling it, filling it up, even though it's heavy, and it feels like I have like a bucket of water on my head. But I'm loving it. What do you guys think? So let's wrap this video up. I'm hoping that I was able to get through someone with this video, you know, this video, this platform is an outlet for me. I know there are many people like me, you know, many people that can relate on the same level as me, many people that are struggling and I hope I can help, you know, because some things just come naturally to me and I feel like it's my job to help and put myself out there because I was gifted with something that comes natural natural to me to help some to be able to help someone that doesn't come natural to them you get what I'm saying but I'll leave links down below again the book that really changed my life was um, how to be a badass at making money by Jen Sincero I'll leave the link down below but this is not sponsored <laughs> this is just based on my own personal experience and I felt like this was a good chit chat and I hope you guys really enjoy it you know um, maybe you can leave some topics that I can talk about down below and we can chat about, you know, that would be, that would be fun to do. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. I guess I should have known that from the start, but baby, I was so caught up in you.